C, we want to find the absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value of G on this interval and justify our answers. So recall that G is the integral from 2 to X of F. And that means we're going to take the areas uh, under the curve, the integral um, for the areas between the function F and the x-axis. And so we can see here, this is a triangle that is 4 wide and 4 tall. 1 half 4 times 4 is 8. This is a triangle 4 wide, 4 tall, 8. 4 wide, sort of negative 4 tall. So the integral here is negative 8. I'll put a negative 8 in there. The area is still 8, but the integral is negative 8. And from 10 to 12, it's a triangle that is 2 wide and negative 4 tall. So this one has integral negative 4. And same thing here, this one has integral negative 4. Now, I could be um, you know, sort of dumb about how I'm finding this and just find the integral to each of these zero values because the critical points will be at the points where f is zero. Let me mark those off for us. So I need to con I could possibly consider negative two, two, six, and ten. And um, I also should consider the endpoints. But I can be a little bit smarter. Uh, the these critical points, these yellow critical points, will only be maxima or minima where we change signs. So you see. Um, at negative 2, let me change here, uh, f goes from negative to positive, which means g prime goes from negative to positive, so this will be a relative minimum. Here, it doesn't switch signs. It's positive before, positive after, so g will be increasing and increasing some more. It won't hit a relative minimum or a relative maximum, but here, F changes from positive to negative, so G was increasing, G is decreasing. If I go from increasing to decreasing, this will be a maximum. And here I went from negative to negative, so that's not going to change uh, things. It was decreasing before 10, decreasing after 10. Um, and then I should consider these. So let's look at those. This endpoint, right after this endpoint, f is negative, meaning that g will be decreasing. So this will be a max relative at least. Um, and this is negative before it stops. So it's decreasing then stops. We'll have a minimum relative at least, maybe absolute there. And now I'm going to consider, I'm going to find the value of g for each of these. So my x's I'm going to consider are negative 4, negative 2, 2, no not 2, that's not going to give me a maximum or minimum, 6, and 12. And consider g of x. Alright, so um, for g of negative 4 I do the integral from 2 to negative 4, so that's from here back to there um, and add it up. So when I'm going from right to left, I'm going to change the sign of things. So I have a negative 8 plus a 4, which equals negative 4. For the next x value, from 2 to negative 2, I go from here there. And again, I'm going left. The, the limits of integration are flipped. So I change the sign of the areas, so I will have a negative 8. Um, the next one from 2 to 6, I integrate this way and I get a positive 8 because I'm going from left to right, that area there is 8. And um, the last one, all up to 12, I add up all of these, and I get going from left to right, so I keep the signs. 8 minus 8 minus 4 gives me negative 4. And so finally, I want to find absolute minimum value and the absolute maximum value. Um, so the absolute min. 
will occur at negative 2, the absolute minimum value is going to be negative 8 at x equals negative 2. Um, and the absolute uh, maximum is going to be have a value of 8 at x equals 6. And the reason for this is um, the only x values that have extrema, based on what we set up here, are x equals negative 4, negative 2, 6, or 12. And that's the lowest and that's the highest um, value that we get.